Knock Twice for Terror, the story of the Enfield poltergeist. From the outside, it looked like any other house. But the many people called in to investigate the strange happenings there knew differently. Journalists, psychic investigators, even the police came to the same conclusion. The rented house in the North London suburb of Enfield was haunted. It all began in September 1977 when daughter Janet, then 11, heard a shuffling noise in her bedroom. It sounded like someone walking in loose-fitting slippers. Four loud knocks followed and Janet was horrified to see a heavy chest of drawers sliding away from the wall. In the days that followed, other objects, including a heavy bed, began to move unaided. A hairbrush flew through the air, hitting one of the sons on the head. A policewoman who was called saw a chair hurled across the room. But fright turned to terror as the thing that haunted the house extended its powers and started to influence the children's behaviour. The girls, both in their early teens, spoke in coarse language with the voices of old men. As Janet lay asleep, she would suddenly find herself hurled into the air to wake screaming. On one occasion, the strange force nearly killed Janet. As she lay in bed, a nearby curtain wrapped itself tight around her neck. Hearing her daughter's choking scream, Mrs. Hodgson r- rushed into the room and fought to pull the material from the girl's neck. The family considered moving away from their home, but for a divorcee with four children, such a step was not easy. And the family feared that the thing might follow them, for there had been strange voices and happenings when they were on holiday in a caravan at Clacton, Essex. Many of those who heard of the family's plight were quick to dismiss it all as childish pranks. But not so the experts. Pi Electronics, specialists who visited the house, were baffled to find that video recording equipment, which worked perfectly well outside, would not function at all inside. A policewoman who was called in admitted, I saw a chair lift into the air. It moved sideways and then floated back to its original position. I have been called to the house several times, but there isn't much the police can do. Psychical researcher Morris Gross tried communicating with the thing using a code of one knock for no, two knocks for yes. Did you die in the house? Two knocks. How many years did you live here? 53 knocks. This was followed by a barrage of knocks. Bewildered, he asked, are you having a game with me? In answer, a cardboard box filled with cushions leapt off the floor, hitting him in the head. It was Janet's sister, Margaret, who shed some light on what was happening. One night, when she was asleep, she began to bounce up and down in the bed and cried, Go away, you ten little things. Still asleep, she gave details about them. They included a baby, three girls, two boys and an elderly couple, one of whom she identified as Frank Watson the man who died in the chair downstairs. Then frightening, throaty growls began to come from Janet's direction. But investigators were convinced she could not have made these sounds herself. One day, the voice told the researcher that its name was Joe, and on another day, Bill Hobbs. He said he came from Durrance Park Graveyard, Hobbs, whose voice was being taped, told them, I'm 
72 years old and I've come here to see my family but they're not here now. The hauntings lasted three years and then ended, never to resume. <laughs>